one person from Tennessee. Hey. Um, This is probably the first of a series of videos on typing. Uh, we wanted to do kind of um, a live typing for you guys. Um, we are going to do um, Megan Fox today. Uh, we have typed her very, just in a really, really quick typing on her before this video, but for the most part, um, I don't think we're 100% certain on her fixes or anything. So we're gonna kind of do that live for you um, on video. Uh, during this and hopefully that will be useful for people who uh, want to know a little bit about how to type. Um, just a quick word about the typing process. I mean, we're showing you how we do it, but at the end of the day, typing is an intuitive process. There really is no way to give um, like a scientific report on um, this is exactly how we know that somebody is a type or not. Um, there's always going to be bias, but this is our way of trying to at least open the door a little bit into our process. And, you know, people who are in the group can see that we have an experiential style of typing and it's not just like one method. It's a lot of things coming together and, you know, they're going to be each typing is going to highlight different things that we use to land on the typing. So, you know, people can watch this stuff and figure some things out that we're doing. OK, so um, we're looking at uh, Megan Fox and. Uh, we're just going to start off. I think sometimes the typing, uh, we do a lot of like body energy typing and any grammar because a lot of times what people say is really misleading. And when you do listen to what people say, you have to be really careful to make sure that you are reading between the lines rather than listening to what they're saying. And I always use the like simple analogy that, you know, we've all seen somebody go, I'm not mad, but you know that they're really, really mad and they're saying the words, they're not mad, but everything. Uh, about their body and energy is saying that they're not mad. So um, what we might do with Megan first is maybe take a quick scroll through some of her social media, some photos of her, Google searches, and maybe even watch the video. We have a couple of videos on mute just to get a sense of what her energy looks like, feels like, registers right away before even hearing anything that she says. So mm -hmm. let's start there. Um, I mean, yeah. right off the bat, if I'm if I'm just thinking about like, you know, triads, um, I I'm not getting a, a hard hit on maybe one of the centers, but I would say I'm not really seeing that she's got dominant. I'm not sensing a whole lot of like serious body energy yet. So she's she's in a relationship with this guy, uh, Machine Gun Kelly. One thing that stands out to me, especially with celebrities that are couples. Depending on whether they have sexual or not, this is not always true, but it's interesting to me that um, them as a couple is, and they've just been dating, I think, for maybe four to six months, they're really wearing on their sleeve. And there's a lot of heat between them, and they're really, you know, they're, I don't know, like, I think that that sense of us as a one single unit is uh, a really part big part of their identity so it, it doesn't seem like either of them are um sexual blind i mean that's just a guess from sort of the energy that they're putting out based on them as a couple it seems like both of these people have sexual somewhere i i noticed that like on uh like dating profiles um and like a lot of uh, self press social people for example will write stuff like looking for a partner in crime um that mm -hmm. kind of like uh, I'm marrying my best friend sort of thing. It's not to say right. that um, there's no sexual heat in those relationships, but when I look at these two, I'm not seeing partner in crime. I'm looking at them and I just think of sex right away because they are, right. like you said, there's like real hot heat in between them in every photo, even just like formally on the red carpet. Is this, mm -hmm. like for example, this, um, you know, right. this isn't really partner in crime. This is like, we just had sex. <laughs> we we just I'm had sex. We're about to have sex. <laughs> you know, if you've seen a lot of Hollywood couples, you know, they're hot people that get together and you don't necessarily feel that heat between them, even though they might have, they're not really like, putting that on display. Yeah, like so. Beyonce and Jay, for example, like they're like a famous Hollywood couple, but they're not, and they look great together, but they're not, I'm not, sense, I'm not seeing this. Um, let's talk about this outfit on the runway. Um, you are 
you know, we're, we're I, I'm already getting the sense of like probably some social blindness here and or maybe something in the seven area because, yeah. um, you know, even people who are like sevens or wacky or whatever, like there, it's, it takes a lot to kind of be like, this is the outfit that I'm choosing to wear uh -huh. like because, you know, you can it's not about um you know, you, you, there, there are all kinds of opportunities to wear all kinds of different things. But if you're like red carpet, people usually go like in terms of social awareness, people usually go mm -hmm. formal. Even somebody who's right. say like, I don't know, Maluma, who's social sexual and he wears all kinds of crazy clothing, he'll still show up in like a suit. It might be like a pink suit, but it'll be a suit. Um, right. But these two, you know, whatever this is, it's, you know, I don't know what she's doing here with this outfit. This is high on not giving a fuck. Um, exactly. To wear this. And I, you didn't, I wouldn't even pick this up. You know, your social lens definitely picked this up. I didn't even think about where they right. were and where she was wearing that. But yeah. just to think about the, the amount of balls it takes to to show up to the, to a red carpet event with a see through dress. And so you could be looking at some seven or even like mm -hmm. a, a three that's really being trying to be provocative or something like that. Um, right. In that in that range of type, you know, assertive type, maybe um, maybe a six could be this testy, yeah. which Machine Gun Kelly would be an example. Of. We haven't gotten to him yet, but he's an example of the six who is really pushing boundaries, uh, who could do this. But um, yeah, that's just to narrow down some types who would basically just do whatever the fuck they want, and you can just yeah. look at their outfit. Like both of them are really pushing the envelope, so. That's, yeah, those are clues. Itself. And it may be worth uh, like parsing out because, yeah, we see a lot of, uh, there are a lot of similarities between six and seven, especially in the sexual realm. And I think that both of those types uh, could, yeah, show up on the runway or whatever and just do six, even when six is social blind, it has some kind of social awareness because it's like an, an attachment type. Um, but sixes can still do this, like, I'm going to do the craziest whatever thing. I'm going to come in. It's that counterphobic thing. But, um, I do find that when sixes do it, and this is subtle, maybe not enough to get from one photo, but when they do it, they're really aware of it and they may be trying to look fierce. The, yeah. the sense that I get from her so far from here is that she like is having a good time. Like she isn't, mm -hmm. she seems to not care. Whatever, I'm gonna do whatever I want, which again is just ring right. seven to me. Yeah, it's very self-contained and vibe. I think once we get to our video, you'll see that um, unlike a six who's really pushing the envelope, she doesn't really care what she's thinking. There's really nothing anyone can do to stop her from doing it. And that's exactly. that sort of energy. Yeah. That sort of energy that is like, I've been doing what I wanted my entire life, and I'm going to continue doing what I want my entire life, and your opinion is irrelevant. That's that it. sort of energy, you know, what, what that's she's it. bringing. Yeah, there's something like, even again this is subtle but even if you just look at the two of them in this picture here she's literally exactly what you just said she's like i do whatever i want i did whatever i want and there's no questions you look at this guy's right. face and he's just like you guys looking at me you guys see this <laughs> right like he, he might have some qualifying statements to explain the outfit yeah. or <laughs> yeah, exactly, you know, exactly. I, I went to like a sexual six concert and uh, some people might know who he is uh, he's on a typing list or database uh, serpent with feet, and he's a sexual six, and he's got like, a really radical look. And at the concert, he was giving all kinds of explanations for where he got his inspiration from, and all these things. And even sixes Attach. that are pushing the envelope have to sort of like, hey, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, you know, kind of like still kind of attached to the grid of yeah, what people yeah. might be thinking or feeling about him. So another clue, I guess, for her is that she's hot but she's not she doesn't really have a lot of accent tones in she's hot in a way that's sort of um energetically blank <laughs> which is clues that likely this is someone who has nine and or three um because yeah. those types are kind of neutral in, in in their respective centers and so sometimes when you have uh people can be really attractive but they bring a lot of you know, when you have six or eight or four, those have like accent tones to yeah. people's energies. Whereas when you, when someone has like three and nine or both of those types in their trifix, it can really kind of mute their energy in a way where um, 
they can come off looking like blank. So, for example, Kim Kardashian is probably, yeah, I think, most likely a Bermuda three and uh, sexual self prize. And she has a similar quality of just like hot but blank energetic, energetic quality to yeah. her. So, I'm seeing a similarity here between Kim Kardashian and Megan Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime it's a, so if you think about attachment types. Um, Six is a bit of an outlier because it's a reactive attachment type. But if you think of the other two, three, nine, uh -huh. I, I think I wrote on the website that they're like tabula rasa, like blank slate. Um, there is something uh -huh. about, it doesn't matter how intelligent, interesting, beautiful, whatever, blah, 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 those types are. But when you have those two types in uh, the trifix, there is a sense of universality. It's like Megan Fox. Yeah, she's hot. She's beautiful, whatever. But when you look at her, yeah, she's not trying to shove something really weird in your face she does have a style and it's interesting but at the end of the day you look at her and you you think about universal things like she could be a model and she's mm -hmm. a bombshell and she's you know what i mean she's got she's got the face the lips the eyes she's got all of that stuff that um and she's emphasizing it we're talking about um a type that i mean is likely not sexual blind um and whether you're sexual blind or not there is if you are wanting to be a sexual object which is something that everybody wants at some point um uh, you are going to go about it in the three nine way which is to again be as universally hot as you can be whereas somebody mm -hmm. like you mentioned um serpent with feet i mean he's definitely trying to be a sexual object and he is an attachment type, but he's that reactive attachment type. So he's actually pushing the weirdness as hard as he possibly can. And so you're not looking at serving with feet and being like, oh yeah, I just like, he's just really hot. That's just not a word you'd ever use to describe him. Even though I would say that like, you know, as sexual doms, they're both kind of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, universal, universal palatable, pal palatable. Like, yeah. you know, when you have, like the, yeah, yeah, nine, six, and three. And so <laughs> yes. this is someone who definitely has, probably has um, um, nine and three at work here. And so yeah. that's, that's a good clue right there. Yeah. And, you know, just right off the bat, um, sometimes it's really easy to see. It's interesting. They're, like, this is really maybe too simplistic, but the different centers kind of uh, show up in different places. Like I find... I don't know, I'm a hard type, so I, I type a lot via image, and I like looking at Instagram and photos and stuff, and I feel like people's heart center, like just Googling them, just looking at photos of like when you're literally on image and you're smiling for the camera, whatever your heart center mm -hmm. is, whether it's first, second, or third, it tends to shine through. And, you know, I feel like people's head center shines through when they start talking. Um, mm. You know what I mean? And body center, I mean, it, it it's kind of there in both but you kind of have to just like look at the whole, I, I feel like, you know, head center is like in, in here and yeah. the gut center is down here in the gut, but like image center is the torso, right? It's the, like the part, if somebody's taking a picture, what's the part that they're looking at? It's that like, whatever you do with yourself when somebody's looking, that's image center. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, you can really see I'm, I'm getting a three wing four fix already from looking at her because not only she got a three fix but i'm getting this sense of like like three wing fours do the untouchable fierce thing like i'm a right, cat right. that that's so i'm getting that um pretty strongly from her like again like kim k um so maybe when she starts talking we start watching her video we'll get a better sense of what her head type is yeah that's a good point that uh people the image that people are putting out is is how we can you can land on their heart fix because for me the gut comes along um, just, you know, when I'm watching people energetically talk, I'm looking at the engine, like what's what's driving them and also kind of the how they're holding their body because yeah. the rigidity of one versus the, you know, the flowy kind of um, looseness of nine versus the force of eight, it's very, it very, it feels very different. So that's usually the first thing that I notice is mm -hmm. people's gut fix for obvious reasons. Um, and then, um, you know, for the head, it's probably, um, that's, yeah, as people talk, I think that can come through. 
Okay, so oh. we are going to start with a little video of Megan Fox. Um, I like this video because she is being interviewed. Um, the good thing about that is that you can kind of watch somebody interact in real time. And then, of course, whatever type the other person is suddenly acts as a contrast. Um, even if they're the same type, you're kind of starting to notice nuances. So um, here she is with um, is that David Letterman. I don't care. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Mecca talked about um, body typing energy. So this is where... Um, we usually start when we're typing people just watching the video on mute because this is where we can again don't listen to what she's saying it doesn't matter what she's trying to show us any of the image social stuff who cares it's just look at her and try to sense what the energy vibe is of her body just by watching the video on mute so let's start with that yeah. oh yeah good what does she do so she well just quickly i mean that's that's a pretty have you watched any of these shows and what people walk on and what they do when they walk on and how they shake David Letterman's hand, that's not yeah. a drawn handshake. That was a very Agreed. assertive <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she's not uncomfortable with this social interaction. She seems just comfortable in her own skin. And again, this is comparatively, you know, if you've watched yeah. these interviews and watched the way people interact with David Letterman, the way, the way people react to the audience and, you know, watch it without sound, you know, eliminate several types. This is probably an assertive type, you yeah. know, because they just showed up to a show and they basically just like comfortable already. And just in general, um, looking at her micro expressions, there's a lot of like head bobs. She's talking fast, she's moving her body around. You can see that there's no delay, you know, anytime, Anytime you think about nine, um, there could, could still be nine, but I would say it's probably, there are some fast nines, but it's probably not core nine if the person has like a zero delay in their responses, right? Like he's saying something, right. she says something, she laughs, she's just, and she's, you know, she's flipping her hair back. She's just completely comfortable with this whole interaction talking. Um, that doesn't necessarily point to social. Um, it just probably points to, uh, yeah, like an assertive type or at the very least, a type with some assertive fixes. You know, she doesn't come off very self-conscious. She's aware of the audience. Right. She's aware of, you know, she's aware of Letterman. Uh, and she's just going through her responses. But she also comes across pretty poised. So it's the the combination of assertiveness, but also like, I don't know, This is she doesn't seem like someone to be easy to rattle on, on anything. I get the sense that if I were talking to her, she'd be running the conversation in whatever direction. <laughs> She yeah. wanted it to go, whether it's linear or not. Um, she's, yeah, yeah. she's, uh, and just, I don't know, the, the general energy of her face and body is like, I'm here. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm right here. I'm, when I look at you, I'm looking right at you, and we're really doing this. And I'm sitting in this chair. She's taking up space comfortably. Again, it, it could still be nine fix, but, you know, because you can have a nine fix with like, I don't know, three and seven, and they're both assertive, and you can still kind of be fairly solid but um right, right. yeah Let, let's let's do some like elimination so i would say that she's not a core nine she's not a core five no. she's not a core four there's no there's she's not a core withdrawn type for sure here we kind of eliminated six when we were looking at photos but we can still sort of keep that open although again with six you even the most assertive sixes you always get this sense of like apology like Right. this thing and they're like you know oh is it okay if i sit can i sit down can i shake your hand there's a lot of second guessing even just little micro i don't see her doing any of that at all um, right right she yeah, feels you know kind of flippant and sort of like you know flippant. self amused you know and that generally um even you know there are lots of different variations on seven but you know this is very good chance this is a hexat you know hexat type and most likely something like a seven I, I would say somewhere in the seven eight range is what, yeah, what this feels like. You know, somewhere in that range is what this feels like. Yeah, because I'm not even getting like you know I was saying about the six. I'm not even even seven wing sixes can do a little bit of that like little boy little cute. girl. Kind of, yeah, cute. Yeah. Uh, she's not cute. She's fierce, um, and that's yeah. more in the seven wing eight eight wing seven whatever area. Um, also, three wing four again does that like right. fierce thing so those are the two energies that i'm getting from her so yeah I would, on mute. if i didn't think, yeah if i didn't think seven i would think three that those are the two energies that are popping up yeah here i'm not sure about her gut fix just yet again we talked about the kind of double blank thing um 
looking at her photos, but we should keep that open because she could be a fix or one fix. It's hard to say. Yeah. She has fun on her way in. She does a fun little yeah. playful. Good to have you here, Megan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tell me uh, where you grew up. Where did you grow up? Um, I was born in Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh. I lived there until I was... Hey, there's one person from Tennessee. Um, and then I moved to Florida when okay. I was... I, I already want to stop. It's just fun. Because, uh, you know, yeah. she's interacting with the audience, but it's very, like, she answers a question and then... Boom, like, oh, something over here, and then she's back. What am I talking about again? Already seeing, like, you know, something, something, there's something heady happening here, let's say. Mm -hmm. I lived there until I was 16, and then I dropped out of high school, and I moved to California. Wow, I dropped out of high school. Now, right there, that's that's fairly provocative statement. What, what, kind, of, what kind of kid were you in high school that caused you to want to <laughs> drop out? I mean, I've always been sort of loudmouthed and obnoxious. Really? A little bit. Okay, so you already got to start. Yeah. <laughs> There's already so much stuff there. Um, you know, social David is like, ooh, you dropped out of high school. What does that look like? Appearances. And the look on her face, she, she was like, oh, is it? I, is that weird? I, I dropped out. I don't know. Like, I did it. So you have somebody who does not care, uh, like, mm -hmm. about what people think. And again, you know, Everybody likes to be like, I don't care what other people think, but really, you know, types like seven, I mean, everybody cares a little bit, but types like seven on the spectrum of caring, they just do not care. They don't even notice and they find a sense of freedom in just like doing whatever. Um, well, part of the thing that stood out is that David thought that she was saying that because she was trying to be provocative. He said, that's a provocative right. statement, but she just said it. She said it like it was just like, I used the bathroom this morning. I dropped out exactly. of high school. You know, there are certain types that one. This is kind of ruling out three because there's really no awareness that one people are going to be reading into what I'm saying. So this is not attachment at all. Um, and she didn't say that to to be provocative. She just said it factually. And then she just went in immediately after that to say, "Well, I've always been a loud and obnoxious person." Which, I mean, there are just a couple, only a handful of types that would do that within the first minute of their Letterman interview. <laughs> Less than, yeah, yeah, like, it's been, it's been, it's the first question. He just asked her where she grew up, or, like, I don't remember. He said, yeah, like, school. And she's immediately, like, here's something about me that people are going to judge, but I didn't notice at all. And also, <laughs> I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a, a loud mouth, obnoxious person. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. this, we thought initially that this could be seven, but... Like right out the gate, this is like bullseye for, you know, uh, I forget, I think it's David who talks about seven and eight being like infant terrible. Like the loudest yeah. brat and the most obnoxious type combination brat, is seven and yeah. eight. Um, yeah. So that right there is already saying some stuff about like this is seven and it's probably not, it's not wing six because there's really not much, there's no attachment here. Um, yeah. She's just going, and plus social blind likely because how do you start an interview? this way yeah no yeah exactly what you said this is really important right because when people are in the group like learning how to type and watching videos it's not about what she said it's how she said it it's that subtle reaction she, it's, it's what he said you have this this social bermuda type asking her again like you said assuming that that she's trying to be provocative because if you're bermuda or social or both you're automatically going to sense it as provocative. He may not even be judging her, but it's just kind of an automatic understanding that like, if you say this, then obviously you're aware like I am of how this would be a provocative statement. She is totally dumbfounded, but also even importantly, like it, she lets that go too. Like, it's not like she's, she, you know, like maybe a six would stop on it and be like, why would you think right. that? You know, let's talk about that. Like you're judging right. me. No, she's literally just like, oh, okay, whatever, I guess. I'm allowed she, to she's not. Yeah, she's not justifying it at all. She's just saying exactly. that, um, oh, that, he said that's provocative. He said, well, I've always been obnoxious. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Known for, for my mouth. And I was always that way. And I was never really interested in, I'm just gonna um, go back. I was born in Tennessee. Tennessee, oh. I lived there until I, I'm sort of known for, for my mouth. And I was always that way. And I was never really interested in, um, 
You've had a guest that has said this before, but I, I'm not really good with authority figures. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wasn't really good with school. Oh. And my mom, she made me get an actual diploma, though. So I, I dropped out and enrolled in correspondence school. And I have a diploma, and I actually well, graduated top of my class well, in good correspondence for you. school. I just want to stop it for a second, right? Because, you know, when, when you're new to typing, you're going to hear authority figures and go, six, six, she's six. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But it, it's never that, uh, first of all, I would say that sixes are completely unaware of how they feel about, or like, like this whole, this whole thing about authority figures. Um, again, she is saying it from the point of view, I would say this is like seven authority, there are a lot of people that have problems with authority figures, right? Seven is a type that does not want to be controlled put inside a grid put inside any kind of box um and and then we have this eight wing we're getting that sense from her body type i mean you always say uh, i think the best description of eight is it is it's uh unapologetic being right like it's just there's no apology for anything so you get a type that doesn't want to be controlled with a wing that's completely and utterly unapologetic that is not going to make a well-behaved student in school and she's not saying it with some kind of moralizing like i don't like authority figures she's just kind of like i just didn't didn't work yeah it just didn't work i, I left <laughs> whereas <laughs> yeah. I mean, sixes that don't that have problems with authority will stay and just gripe and rage against the machine <laughs> exactly that's the difference exactly that's yeah. the difference i mean yeah so this is definitely a hex hat type this is not uh, this is not someone who uh, at least her wing is not an attachment type either. So as the way she explains what she did, she just kind of just has zero apology, or even that doesn't even recognize there would be any problem with anything that she did. She just, this is what I wanted to do, so I did it. Yeah, and, and even just like the tone of her voice um, as she's talking, I think I have something up on the website uh, with the typing tools that says that like eights, um, one of the eight things is, having a voice that's like too loud for the room. But I actually want to amend that because interestingly enough, I think that eights, core eights actually have like, most of the time have really quiet voices because they're really calm people, even eight wing seven. Mm -hmm. and there's something about them that's like kind of contained. Like, it's just like, you're not, you're not rattling me. But I find that type right. that have an eight fix or an eight wing, it's like a different mm -hmm. story, right? The seven wing eight is yeah. loud. They're talking loud all the time. You know what I mean? They're, they're not even noticing that like, there's just this like, like, you know, turning the volume up on something and it's always just slightly like, could you just turn that down a little bit? Could you just temper what you're saying? Um, and it's not, it's not like, I don't even know if it's the decibel level, but it's the tone. She's not, there's no like dips, you know what I mean? She's not yeah. pulling back. It's just like a hundred all the way through like a machine gun. That's how she talks, right? Yeah. I think part of the thing with eights is that uh, eights are going to be self-contained regardless of the stacking but when they amp up is when the volume is going to get out of control. So I think that's what gets people, <laughs> yeah. takes people, um, catches people off guard is because this person is self-contained until they're not. And then the volume is out of control. But generally, I don't think most eights are going to be loud all the time. It's just kind of like a, a self-contained energy for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, with when you get seven, seven, is the total opposite of self-contained energy. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Just a side note on eight. I was watching, I started watching The Wire. I've never watched it before. And if anybody has watched it or knows Idris Elba, and I was trying to figure out what his type was, I couldn't figure out if it was three wing four or eight, but he's an eight. But the thing with Idris Elba, um, and he's probably eight, three, six or something like that. But the man, mm -hmm. I mean, his acting, he's known for, I mean, he's, I mean he's, a, he's a big rock of a man, but also like he talks so quietly and with, with I can't even, I can't even imitate it so quietly with no facial expression, nothing. He doesn't move, but there'll be random scenes where like, you know, you're probably like this character should be getting angry and you get nothing. But like all of a sudden he'll throw something off a table and you're like, <gasps> like you just jump because this is like really, really like, you know, there's something in there and you're not going to get close to it. But like, it's only when he really flies off the handle that you're like jumping out of your seat um, but the man is quiet and intense. I mean, he is, he's also, he's, you know, eight wing nine. So there's a nine wing there too. But um, this right. is the difference between say like an eight wing nine, which is like the standard eight that you're going to see. And like a seven wing eight, seven wing eight, loud mouth, um, chaotic, eight wing nine, mm -hmm. very self-contained, very controlled, still got a big energy of like, don't touch me, but 
Um, actually, and that's not actually what you get from like a seven wing eight. I'm not getting that energy from her. I mean, I definitely get the sense that she's um, she's assertive, but it's not this kind of like she's not pushing. She's mm -hmm. there's, there's too much chaos with her. She's flipping. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Seven is more. I think the verse seven versus eight. You know, people can tease about what's the difference between seven wing eight and eight wing seven. There's a big wall with eights, even eight wing sevens that you know there's going to be an untouchable quality there and self-containment so that when that person does explode it's a lot more um i guess it's you don't see it coming a lot of times you know this person you know this person has an intensity and then when they amp up it's like oh there it is because otherwise most eights are going to seem chill and self-contained but you're going to feel i can't really get close to this person whereas sevens seven wing eights are just more out there more fun and yeah. more, um, you know, head energy kind of bouncing off of people. So I want to just maybe check in. We'll watch more, but I want to check in on her fixes. So I'm still mm -hmm. not, it's very tricky with seven wing eight because, you know, like a seven wing eight already has a, anytime the you're bordering another center. Um, so there's, there's already the core type. I, I think we're, we're kind of settling on seven wing eight. I, I don't see any reason to stray away from seven wing eight for her, um, but her wing is already in another center. So we mm -hmm. are trying to figure out if she eight fix, we're going to see eight, but seven yeah. wing eights with eight or with one very different story. Um, seven wing eight with nine is still going to have a lot of that eight energy. So I haven't seen that yet, but her heart center, uh, again, we got three wing four just from looking at our pictures and I'm not seeing anything that's pointing me away from the direction of a three fix. I do not see her doing anything to it. She is, again, two brings out the like self-referencing of seven um, and I'm not seeing her do that. She's, again, very much just like talking um, about herself and whatever. Um, and I'm I'm not seeing her, I'm definitely not seeing her do anything four-ish. Like she's, she's not pulling back in any way um she's not trying to stay hidden um so mm -hmm. right now i think seven wing eight and three probably three wing four just based on how she looks is where we're going uh for those two centers um do you see anything in her gut center yet well the yeah the gut center if you know if she is a seven wing eight just comparing her to seven wing eights that have either one or eight fixes um those are very sharp um very distinct examples of seven wing eight. So for example, a seven wing eight that has an eight fix would be like a, a Liam Gallagher, who that combination of chaotic seven wing eight with an eight fix is someone who's gonna have constant push. Like it's, it's funny, but it's also kind of chaotic and negative. Um, and if you've ever watched any clips of Liam Gallagher, that's what you, that's what you get uh, in any interview. It's never not going to be there. Uh, if someone has a, an eight fix and they're a seven wing eight, or if they have a one fix, that criticism, that sharp, you know, a lot of these chefs like Gordon Ramsay, um, you're gonna get that sharp quality from them. So what I get from her is that there's just a very palatable kind of, um, she is a seven wing eight, but at the same time, she's very composed. She's not like that out of bounds, if that, if that makes sense. She's within the yeah. lines. Yeah, what you called her before, uh, I was going to say this before, uh, you said she was poised, which is, I, I'm I'm getting that too, right? She's got posture. There are two kind of type areas that I think of when I think of poise, and that's like the three, four area, three wing four, four wing mm -hmm. three, and then the nine, one area, nine wing one, one wing nine. Um, and so we've established the three wing four, but I would... I'm, I'm betting on some nine wing one in there something because there is still something about her posture, something that despite the seven wing eight is refined and delicate and it's not, right. um, I would say, okay, if, I, I would say there's also some refined. Refined, I would put more in the four wing three category as well, but nine wing one also. So yes. it's not four wing three for sure. So I would, I, I'm starting at nine wing one from her gut, yeah. Yeah, that feels correct. It feels, you know, there's, um, before she got surgery, there were in her face and the way she looked, she had like a little bit more of that nine wing one quality. And I think the impression I had before of her was that she might be a, uh, a sexual nine um, before we take right. a closer look at it. So, you know, energetically that quality was there. So that quality of three wing four ice and nine wing one 
refined, soft quality, but then you look closer and you're like, oh, wow, this is a 78. So those three yes. fixes are really coming through. Yeah, and if she, you know, because we were talking about the 7-8 thing, if she had a 9-wing-8 fix, let's say, you'd really, it, it, that that 8, you know, double 8-wing um, would be pretty emphasized. I always think um, of the difference between, again, it's hard to reference people, you have to kind of know them, but um, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, because you have two 7-wing-8s, uh, Nicki Minaj, and they both have a 3 fix. Cardi B has a nine fix and Nicki Minaj has an eight fix. Um, but yeah. just in general, like they're both these really loud mouth um, seven wing eight rappers, but like Cardi B is so cute and so likable and so funny. And she's like your best friend when you watch her, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, she's loud mouth, but like Nicki Minaj is like, you are not, you are not gonna talk back. She is like intense, fierce, she's angry. She talks back to people and doesn't, she's also social blind, there's that, but like she doesn't mm -hmm. miss a beat. Like so an interviewer right. will say something a little off and she rolls her eyes and cuts back at them and doesn't care. When a seven wing, when a seven, even without an eight wing, it has an eight fix. That is like a level of abrasive pushiness that um, is not as easy to like, to be likable for sure. Yes. Great. Now, when Can you, I tell you something? Yes, go right ahead. Oh, sorry, I want to, she interrupts him. He, he is, <laughs> I, I, I had to stop already. He's, he's yeah. already like, so I'm I'm gonna like let this I'm the host I'm gonna let this interview. No, can I tell you something? Can I? When you're talking. I'm talking over you, and I'm just gonna go right in and interrupt. And and look at her. She's she's smiling. She doesn't care. Well, it's also partly because I think she knows that what he's gonna say next isn't interesting at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, you know. Yeah. Because it's gonna have to do with oh, why did you drop? You know, along that conversation line, her dropping out and that what that means and she's just yeah. gonna just and it's also revealing because when we do this this kind of pattern in interrupt because this is going to show you what her core personality is like what um what she goes to so what does she go to next what is she going to say now yes i've had three crushes my whole life john stewart conan o'brien and you oh and I just... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay so she stops she stops him from asking her some question about, yeah, some boring shit that she doesn't care about. Never. To tell him that she has a crush on him. There's a huge clue there. Like, how many types of people within the first minute of the interview are going to say, I dropped out of school, and then, of course, the host is going to want to talk about that. Let me interrupt you to tell you that I've always had a crush on you. Like, that is a <laughs> yeah, huge clue. I mean, do with that? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's a huge clue right there in terms of, this is probably not someone who's has any social. It's probably someone who's not sexual blind. Um, this is probably not an attachment type. You know, you know, all those things are coming together in this one moment. Yes, exactly. So the thing with, uh, with social and or attachment is that even if you're being a brat, you are very aware of how people are going to feel when you say something and and respond not in every single moment especially i think like head types talk really fast and sometimes just say a lot of words but for the most part like you are you are saying something and asking a question with the intention of at least having some understanding of what the other person is going to get from it this question is it's weird it's inappropriate i mean he's like what like a 50 something year old man that like and she's probably in a relationship. I don't know. Like, there's just a lot of things about this that, like, and also what he's with, the only other type I could imagine doing something like this is like two wing three. Um, but, but with two wing three, you do have this parallel between like the sexual instinct. Um, um, and again, I don't really see two anywhere else around her, but there's that sense of like, I don't know, like what, my first question is like, what the hell were you intending with this question? But with seven wing eight social blind, I don't think she like, Right. It, it's it also the thing about attachment types is like there is always going to be a sense with attachment types of wanting to be on the same page, even just a little bit. Like I say something, you're like David as an attachment type is responding to that. And yeah. the game is that as the other attachment type would then respond to partially to what David's saying. And that's how the conversation happens. And she's completely interrupting that whole conversation, chopping it off and said, I want to talk about this thing that has nothing to do with what I just said. Um, so you can see sort of the hex hat versus attachment thing going on here yeah. where uh, she is going to talk about what she wants to talk about and That's say, it. do yeah, 
and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And Seven, Seven is, you know, like you said, Enfant Terrible, the like spoiled child is like, no, I want to talk about this. I don't care yeah. where we are, what we're doing. This is better. So I'm with, and you know what? Um, it's even interesting with this, that, I mean, so you're Eight Wing Seven and Social Blind. And um, if, if we're in like a, a group chat or any kind of conversation um, and you start talking about one thing, and like four other people changed the subject, you literally like took an eraser and just erased everything. <laughs> like did not see it, did not care. Like, unless what they're saying happens to spark your interest, but like, it, it's it's like, it's like white out. Like you just, oh, someone said something, I'm just gonna completely get rid of that. Cause you, and you'll just go well, back to whatever it is, you know? Well, it's like, to me, it's like, I had so I came here to, if I were saying something, which, doesn't happen that often. I it means I have something I want to get out, and just because three or four other people said something doesn't mean I'm going to stop saying what the fuck I'm. I, I will say what I, I meant to say. Then I maybe respond to what other people have said. But I don't care what you're. I mean, if I'm writing something, I'm going to write what I'm saying, <laughs> regardless of who else yeah. is saying anything. And that makes perfect <laughs> sense. But you know, it's even me, uh, my type. But as uh, social, I. Uh, I'm I'm just aware of it. Like I'm just like, oh, I left that person hanging. Um, mm -hmm. I might not care, but like it's there's a difference between again, like she's like not noticing at all. Um, I'm noticing and maybe just choosing to, I don't know, ignore them or you know, there's mm -hmm. like a difference. Um, and so there's a subtlety there, right? So it's not you can't just look at what people do. This is like why you know wanted to make these videos because it really is important to try to figure out what you know, the inner motivation. And just a quick note, because of uh, seven wing eight is kind of inherently, um, you know, a hexad type that's really self-contained. And so even if she was a social type, there's going to be a, a level of not giving a fuck that's going to make her seem like maybe she was low in social. So it's a little bit tricky sometimes at seven wing eight yeah. or eight wing seven, yeah. whether or not they're social. I mean, I think you can still spot it if someone is a social because there is going to be some element of them seeing how people are reacting to them, even though they're being obnoxious. But in this case, it's almost like she's caught off guard by some of his reactions. Like, why would you be, you know, why would you think that was that would be provocative? Or why would you have a reaction to me saying this right now? And that's an example of social blind where it's kind of, she's only kind of seeing, she's tracking the audience, but she's not really seeing how any of this might frame up, you know, how might people be reacting to what she's saying. Play. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What uh, What do those other two do? <laughs> uh, now, now, Megan, and, and now, were you uh, were you in trouble when you were in high school? Were you uh, in trouble? <laughs> He's going back were you to in the trouble? high school. <laughs> yeah. I mean, from. Maybe 10 years until 16, I was sort of like perpetually grounded because I would, I started the first time I ever got in trouble. I was a good student, like straight A's. Um, in fifth grade, I got caught passing notes talking about this boy named Troy Pruitt, mm. who was my first French kiss. Wow. And okay, so, sorry, she's, she's talking about sexual experiences again. <laughs> she's, again, he just wants to talk about boring school shit, and she's just like, no, we are talking about sex. Yeah, she found it, a it's way. interesting. To me. It's it's like what happens when you put someone in a pressure situation they've never been in before, like being a, a guest on a talk show. Uh, what what happens is basically people's types start spilling out, and because she's telling a story about school, I don't think she thought this through. But you're just kind of going with whatever your instinctual memories latch onto as to what happened. So it's interesting to watch that she stops the conversation to tell him that she has had a crush on him, you know, since she was young. And then she tells a story about how she's getting trouble in school and she's fixating on, oh, this guy that I had a crush on that I had my French kiss with. Like that is bullseye for, you know, sexual instinct is sort of the guidepost for my life experiences. Exactly. And I would even say that there's like, to me, this is, again, just one of those, I don't see, I don't see it like super ego i don't see attachment i don't see social you do not talk about preteen sexual experiences within the first few minutes of an inch like it's just like why would you 
Do you know what I mean? She's not even talking yeah. about the sex she had yesterday. She's talking about like, I made out with a boy. What grade did she say she was in? I don't remember, but like, it, the yeah, point is young. high school, elementary school, whatever. I mean, why She's are 10 you years old. this? Uh, 10, okay. Like, you know what I mean? You are talking about <laughs> underage sex on David Letterman. <laughs> it's been, you know, this video is two minutes and 40 seconds. She hasn't even, she's been sitting down for like a minute. Um, that's, mm-hmm. that is social blind, crazy social blind. And again, the kind of seven wing eight, I don't care. Um, and like you said, it's, it's, it's specifically sexual first because yeah, the marker of her experiences, like you said, is, are these, these kind of sexual events. Well, it's kind of like the, Letterman is trying to get some background. It's like, you know, where are you from? You know, you were you get in trouble in school, kind of like a social framework of who she is. And she's sort of like throwing out um, these sexual hooks or attraction, yeah. provocative kind of like to lure you in. It's like, I want to know more about this interesting character. Um, but from a sexually alluring point of view, like, um, so it's interesting how the instincts are kind of going to be doing their thing. Like a social type is going to come out and do something different, but a sexual type is in this, their own way going to create kind of uh, a something that's going to hook people in and reel them in uh, using their personality, of course, is, you know, I'm going to give you interesting hooks, some juicy hooks for you to kind of uh, latch onto that's going to be like yeah. a sexual hook. Yeah, exactly. And, I'm seeing, again, like just as me being a social type is that if I were interviewing somebody like it's not and I'm not I'm not uncomfortable with what she's saying, even though I'm aware of how like cringy it is. But it's more that like, my God, lady, like you've been here for a minute. I am. He is trying to frame like he is asking her, who are you? Show me who you are. And when you're social blind and sexual dom, it's like that who am I thing that like these are these are my interests, these are my tattoos, this is what I do, all that, like, you know, that sounds really simplistic, but, like, all of that stuff conglomerated, like, I'm this person, I listen to this music, whatever, all that kind of stuff that people, we just automatically advertise to people, she's just not giving it, the only thing that she keeps going back to are, like you said, sexual hooks, even a social sexual seven wing eight is going to come out, and and they'll, it'll be random chaotic stories, but they will be stories that tell you about their personality, like who, what yes. kind of person they are. Um, you know, the only time that she gave that information is when he specifically asked her, like, why'd you get kicked out? And she was like, okay, here are a couple of adjectives about me. I'm obnoxious. Anyway, back to sex, right? right? Yeah, it's interesting to watch that play out. Just very narrow focus on, oh, well, when I was 10 years old and I just French kissed someone for the first time, <laughs> it's like okay we didn't need to know that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and i'd also say that like because we should kind of start rounding out her trifix here but i would say too that like um i'm not sure which one is secondary yet but just to go back to nine wing one um i do think uh how do i put this as much as she's doing all of this within the umbrella of seven wing eight she is doing a little bit of like come to me like here's a sexual experience mm-hmm. ahead and the way that she's like turning her head and she's looking and she looks at the audience after she says that thing about uh, Letterman and having a crush on him. She is doing a little bit of like, I'm beautiful and I'm saying stuff and like, that's enough, right? Like I don't have to do any, like nine, nine's, you know, attraction strategy is like, just hoping that they get noticed like not having like right. being gorgeous so they don't have to say anything or do anything mm-hmm. d- doesn't don't have to exist too much it's just like here's my body i'm anything whatever um and she right. is doing a little bit of that in this video um that again to me really rules out like she's not really just like forcing anything down our throats like an eight would do um and i'm not really getting any sense of like Again, there, even with seven wing eight with one, there'd be a little bit of like morality there that might pull her away from mm-hmm. some of the stuff that she's saying. But yeah, I'm getting a little bit of that like come to me energy, which I would expect from a nine fixer. He had hair like Zach Efron, yeah. I remember exactly. And um, I, I got caught, my mom got called into the principal's office and I got in trouble, I got grounded. And then I, I escaped the house, I, I snuck out. And then I got grounded again, like for longer. And this just 
happened over and over again until I woke up and I was 17 years old and I hadn't left the house in seven years. <laughs> and and, and was, was it because even at an early age that you knew what you wanted to do and felt like uh, high school was just getting in the way or it was just being difficult? I was just being difficult. Just for the fun of it. Yeah. yeah. Just for the exercise I of it. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but then you impressed them. So yeah, she's just a random, she's a lot of the same stuff we already talked about. I'm just being difficult, flippant, she doesn't care. But also just the way that she tells a story is very, I mean, this is putting me like definitely head center dominant. It's just kind of, even six wing seven students, it's just kind of this like almost chaotic string of events. I went home, I got grounded, this happened, then I was at home and then I made a joke about it and blah, blah. Like, it's just, it's just kind of like this, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how I would, how you'd call it, like a, Stream of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing to say is uh, that we are guessing and typing her instincts, you know, by watching these videos that we have devised a system within any grammar to type instincts with collages because it's very, very fast. And, um, and beyond that, every decision that people make is sort of a collage. And so we can also do it with social media and different personal aesthetic. Um, but it is harder and much longer to figure out someone's instinct stacking by watching videos, but you can do it. I mean, it's something that we're kind of doing currently. Um, it's just a little bit tougher to do and it takes a lot longer to sort of nail that down. But we eventually round it out by looking at people's sort of aesthetic decisions because that is just a, a way that instinct stacking is moving out, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're looking at, um, we're kind of like, let's just take stock of what we have right now. So we're pretty clearly seeing seven wing eight core. Um, mm -hmm. We're, like you said, the instinct stacking, it's, it's always tricky. Like anytime we don't have a collage, it's, it's, it would take longer, long, much longer than this video to really narrow it down. But pretty sure we're seeing sexual self pres here. She seems sin flow, um, but um, social blind. Um, and we, again, she's kind of, judging her life based on these like sexual markers and she's not giving any of the social details that the interviewer is asking for. Um, we're also seeing some poise and some come to me energy, which we're gonna put in 911. And we're seeing mm -hmm. her kind of very model like poster child face, which is the th sort of three center. And we're seeing three wing four with her uh, fierce kind of look. Um, and again, this is all very, quick summary obviously when we're typing a video we do a lot more digging than this but just for the purpose of this video this is kind of where we're at the only place i think we probably need to go next is um we'll watch one more video um and we'll see if we can figure out the order of those three fixes i most vividly remember the wizard of oz and that's been my favorite movie for most of my life and I was obsessed with it and I watched it over and over and over again i wanted to be dorothy for many Okay, so just Wizard of Oz is pure seven. I'm just gonna, mm -hmm. you know, like just start there. Years of my life, until I was about six, I would wear my hair in the pigtails. And I think my grandmother made the costume, the little gingham checked um, jumper. And I had ruby slippers and I made my mom call me Dorothy. So one thing to look at, at least with the second fix, is that it is the most energetically noticeable. I mean, you can look at the trifix together as a sort of a combination of like, maybe you can look at the types as colors or energies. They're all gonna show up there, but the secondary fix is gonna be noticeable in that you might be confusing that person's secondary fixes their core type because it's gonna be really upfront. And so to use the example of um, uh, Nicki Minaj and what's her face? What was the other rapper? Uh, Cardi B. Brother? Yeah, Cardi, Cardi B, like, yeah, she is obnoxious, but she's very like cute and likable. Um, and that comes off like in her videos, and that's part of the reason people love her. And what I noticed just the the whole time we've been watching Megan is that she just comes across very icy. She's it's poise that's coming across from you know, it's not nine wing one sort of cutesy uh girl, you know, like sort of like likability, this is kind of like the three ice queen um, allure that she's got going on. And so, you know, it really points to the, I, the possibility, the strong possibility that her three fix is secondary because if you were looking from a distance, you might think she was a three, just and how poised and icy and 
I mean, she comes, if you watch a video of Kim Kardashian, it's not unlike that. Just the level of, you know, icy kind of ice queen kind of, um, not every three is like this, but it's definitely a quality that a lot of threes can have. Yeah. Especially three and four. So my thought was, um, looking at her, yeah, like I, I, you, you, she looks like a three. Um, the only, like, I guess, with you want to think about the stem too, right? Because we're got, um, you know, seven three is an assertive stem, um, and seven yeah. nine is a positive stem. But positive. one thing that I get from seven nine specifically is this sense of like, you know, nine is is water and it's disparate, and seven is chaos. So I just get a sense of a person who talks like this. It's just like, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Seven, three, with sevens who have three secondary tend to be actually the, the types of sevens that are not the scattered seven stereotype. Um, right, right. You know, even with the eight wing, um, with nine secondary, you just might see um, a little bit more of kind of like a like a flightiness. Um, I don't know how right. to put that. It doesn't, it doesn't even refer to like intelligence level, but just this kind of energy of like, you know, head in the clouds. Um, whereas yeah, with her, bubbly. yeah, bubbly. Yeah. Like with her, I'm not getting, it could, again, it's tricky because with seven wing eight, it's already such an assertive energy and nine wing one, uh, like the three would still stand out because nine wing one is kind of like a, like a withdrawn type, but, right. um, yeah. Like, is she more of like a straight line when she talks or is she doing a little bit more of like stuff just kind of hanging there? So maybe we need to mm -hmm. watch a little more. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't my name for about a year from five to six. I always told my mother that I wanted to be an actress since before I can remember. And I think, you know, maybe it started with Judy Garland and, and Wizard of Oz, but I've just never had any um, desire to do anything else. And I'm not really sure why. So, I mean, yeah, there's this whole I was driven to be an actress thing, which you could say points to three, and uh, but there's this, I just like it, I don't know why, that it yeah. does feel kind of nine-ish to me, actually. There's this, she's not, she's just she's not that, she's not, out there. Yeah, she's not as cold and as icy as I expected. I mean, even though like when she's not speaking, it feels that way, when she does yeah. start speaking, she does have like a lot of uh, cute expressions that she's like, oh, I'm just a cute, likable, whatever, you know, kind of thing going on. So. Yeah, it's it's the three and nine are pretty loud, but um, it is possible that she's nine secondary instead of three secondary. I think for me right now, I'm again, guys, it's a live typing because we we didn't do her fixes before. But yeah, I think I think I'm feeling like from this. I know it's meant to be this like oh they they put a black background and it's kind of designed to be intimate, but still it's like I'm still sort of feeling that there's this sense of it's different. If she were seven wing six. I might say, okay, three secondary, but because she's seven wing eight, um, when seven yeah. wing eights get kind of soft and she does feel kind of soft in this, you want to think about like a withdrawn secondary. Right, right, right. That's a good point. When I was a kid, I was on a swim team from the time, a competitive team from the time I was five until I was 14. And I used to compete in state championships and I thought that's what I was going to be. I have a pretty strong butterfly still. Yeah, I'm much slower than I used to be, which is very sad, but it's still decent. My form is there, the speed is gone. The first legitimate thing I booked was a, uh, a straight-to-DVD film with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen called Holiday in the Sun. I think my character's name is Brianna, if I remember, and she was a mean girl. Yeah, I don't know, what are you, what are you getting? Because, I mean, she's just talking about a lot yeah, of stuff, but... That's a little, that's feeling a little bit more nine fix because it's, she doesn't seem... For a seven wing age, she seems a little childish. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, and the, the whole, even the Wizard of Oz thing, I think of the Wizard of Oz as, again, that seven nine, like literally yeah. flying up into the clouds and then landing somewhere else. There's a lot of fantasy here. So, fantasy. Um, yeah. Yeah. That feels more seven nine than seven three because seven three would probably come off a little bit more serious. And she's just kind of like, you know, whimsical. Whimsical, yeah, these are all, yeah, exactly. Like, and in the interview, too, again, she just kind of, well, let's pull the conversation over here, there. Again, I, I think that uh, another argument to me, too, is that, like, the kind of social blindness that we saw in the interview, like, 
three fix. It's not to say that threes are always like social blind threes can be really social blind, but there is still a, mm-hmm. a consciousness of like, what do I look like? What am I doing right now? What am I? She does seem, yeah, you know, like you said, whimsical. Like her head's really in the clouds. 